here we are. I know you, and I know you off camera. I hope you know me. I live with you. <laughs> this is the Sunday video update for Sunday, January 27th, 2019. I'm Jared Fuller. Amy's joining me off camera. Dad's still sleeping. Uh, what a week we had. Oh, I know it. It was a lot of fun. We went to the Shine Circus on Friday, and that's probably what I'm going to be talking about in this video. And then uh, Dad and I went to a funeral on Saturday. Yeah, that was tough. You guys went to a funeral yesterday in Owasso. We got another one coming up next month. Another one coming up next month. Yeah, that's too bad. Life sure is fleeting. Uh, the only big bummer is it's the big C word. Yeah. No one really likes. Yeah, I think I know what that big C word is. And it is what took my friend. Yeah. Four year or uh, stage four cancer. Yeah. But there is, however, another C word that that actually was like really cool and it was on friday the circus yes i like that c word better so we'll talk about that c word it sounds good uh so it, it was at the dow event center in saginaw today is the last day by the way um they had all kinds of just really cool stuff i uploaded some videos to my youtube channel here and um the car you know the the car that transformed into a, a transformer yeah that was like like one of the coolest things that they had at least i they thought had, they had the transformers usually i mean now they're more upbeat but they first came out i think in the 80s i think the transformers are in the 80s yeah because my brother used to have well this i, I wish i would have been able to capture you know when the car had the, the whole front end went up. Yeah. I wish I would have been able to capture that on video, but instead I got it where it was already up. Mm. And then, you know, they were doing their thing and yeah. jumping around, bopping around, and then they, uh, you know, they put the front end back down. But you could see the headlights on the car. It's a car that transformed into a robot. I mean, that was really cool. Yeah, I still like the gorilla, too. Yeah, they had a, a huge... I, I dare say he had to have been about 40 foot tall. If not more. Yeah. It was an animatronic gorilla. Um, yeah. And, and it was. And it had the gorilla sound with it and everything. Yeah. Roaring. Mm. King Kong. Yeah. It, it was cool. Um, that, that's what he looked like was King Kong. Yeah. It was really. It was just a great time. Uh, and of course. Shriners Circus supports the Shriners Hospitals for Children, which is why I go every year. I've been going every year since 2004. Um, so I've been going for the past 15 years. I haven't missed a single show in 15 years. So um, it, it was just a wonderful time. Um, they announced, even before they did the National Anthem, because they do the National Anthem before every show at the top of every show, and even before they announced the National Anthem, Chef the Clown, spelled S-H-E-F, Chef the Clown. That's another because you spell Chef with the C, so there's another C word. But <laughs> Chef the Clown, spelt with an S. He announced that Jared is a child or is a cancer survivor. Yes. And and it's like, what? Because uh, I went, yeah. And then I wait a minute, and I kind of look at Dad, like you had something to do with that, didn't you? And Dad says, me no. <laughs> It was really cool. The crowd went wild. That, that was a problem. We always know who the culprit is yeah. and stuff like that being done. Yeah. Um, so Dad had made an announcement to Chef the Clown, and Chef the Clown did a shout-out for me. The crowd went wild when they, yeah, this is for Jared, the, the cancer survivor. What? Messed up on the... Yeah, he said that I was a cancer survivor for five years. Actually... I've been an advocate for five years and a survivor for 30 years, uh, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, the shout out was really, really super cool. And it just made that night even better. Um, the crowd went wild though. When, when, when he announced cool it, they didn't use the last name. Yeah. They just said Jared. Yeah. It went, with them doing it that way, 
it made you think that there was another Jared in yeah. the audience. <clears throat> And that's who they were talking about. Yeah, that's why I went, woo! And then I kind of thought about it for a minute. Well, how many other Jareds are in this arena who's a, a cancer survivor? I mean, the, the chances are good. Yes. But, hmm, just, just out of the blue like that, just kind of, you know, there was a kid there who, you know, he was battling cancer. And chemo made him lose his hair, of course. And Chef the Clown, he gave Dad one of those foam red clown noses. Uh, some some of them, I think they're usually made of rubber, but this one was made of foam. Oh. And Dad had noticed that the little kid was walking up the steps uh, back to his seat, and Dad, Dad got his, his yeah. Dad Dad was wearing it on his nose, and then he got his attention. And he says, "Would you like to have this?" And that kid. You lit up. I mean, you'd swear that, that dad handed him a million bucks. I mean, it was just one of the most phenomenal things. It's the little things that make the biggest differences. Yeah. And that kid was so happy, and he's just skipping along, got the nose on, and dad started crying, getting emotional. and Huh? I know he's listening. I know dad's listening. He's pretending like he's sleeping. He's listening to the... But um, it was just one of the, it was a great night. It was an awesome night, and um, yeah, the Shrine Circus is still at the Dow Event Center. Uh, I don't know if there's any. There should be some tickets available. Yeah, there uh, should be. The numbers and on the bottom of the screen. Be cheaper <coughs> would it be in the last day? Yeah, today's the last day. Uh, the number's up on the bottom of your screen. Um, you can call the box office at the Dow Event Center for ticket availability and prices. Uh, and tomorrow is the last day of Zender Snowfest in Frankenmuth, which I did not make it to again this year. I've been wanting to go, but it's it's just been so cold. And the roads have been... The roads have been a mess. It's been really brutally cold. And speaking of brutally cold, we have a major... Excuse me, a major winter storm on the way. They're talking, we're supposed to get like anywhere from eight inches to a foot of snow. My son is getting slammed right now. Yeah. They're forecasting because now and we you've got a flat tire. We, on top we, of it. Yeah, we were under a winter storm watch. We've been upgraded to a winter storm warning. And that's Saginaw County. That's where we are. Right. Um, they're talking eight to 12 inches, so we can get up to a foot of snow. In addition to wind chills, 40 below zero. It's going to get really, really brutal around here. And everybody, everybody on Facebook is like, oh, my God, what do I do? What do I do? It's typical Michigan weather. It's mid-winter. It's late January. Yeah. We get this weather. This is typical we, for we us. We get this until March. Yeah. At it, the most. Sometimes April, depending Sometimes, on. Yeah. Depends yeah. on the climate. But it's it's well the climate. I mean the it's the it's winter. We we always get the the brutally cold, snowy yeah. weather. It's Michigan. It's typical, and everybody on Facebook's all freaking out and everything. It's like, please give me a break. Could that be because they're not familiar with Michigan? They've lived in Michigan their whole life. Oh man. Just like I have, and people are all freaking out. Oh, what am I gonna do? You're going to do what you do normally every time we get a snowstorm. You're going to pack up all the things you need, like bottled water, first aid kits, things like that. Um, if food. You, food. If you don't have to go out, why are you going to go out? Stay home if you don't have to. If, if, unless it's an emergency, then you have no choice. But even still, when you do venture out into the winter weather... You got to have flashlights and, and band-aids, first aid kits and food and things like that. Um, we're going to make it. We're going to be fine. It's a winter storm. It's nothing unusual for us. We, we get winter storms every year. And people are always, they, they just, they freak out about it. It's well, snow. I think, I think I'm wondering, though, with, with people coming, like, from the warmer climates, mm -hmm to Michigan and not realizing. Well, I, I will say that... Um, that that's some of it? 
I mean, everybody knows this. Um, there, there are places in this country that typically get no snow at all, and they've been getting snow. So the, yeah. o the ozone layer is completely screwed up. Um, but I'm talking about places like Michigan where we are prone to get winter weather, you know, blizzards and things like that. Right. We are notorious for that. Because, like, uh, my girlfriend's Annie from Oregon. Yeah. She even says that they're not used to having snow and they got snow down there. Mm hmm. They had snow out in the desert out in Arizona. Yeah. And they don't, they never get snow. No. At least not that I'm aware of. So if you're watching from Arizona, correct me on that. But um, yeah, Michigan, we we're, we're known for that. Arizona better than we do. Please. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they're from Arizona, correct me on it. But if you know, we live in a we live in a part of the country where winter weather is is imminent between December to say I don't know March, maybe April at the latest. We're in an area for that. People freak out. It's like, relax. It's a winter storm. It's snow. We're going to be fine. If you have to venture out, you just have to take it easy. And you have to remember to, you know, break early. Like if the roads are slippery, you have to break early before you get to the intersections. And just take your time going. You'll be fine. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, step out. She's going into the bedroom momentarily, but the Shrine Circus was, it was just, it was fantastic. I had a wonderful time and I'm already looking forward to going next year. They had, um, you know, they had the Shrine Clowns and they had, uh, you know, the car with that, you know, the, the robotic car thing that I posted on, on my channel here. And I talked about that with Amy just briefly. Um, they had all kinds of different things. They had um, the elephants and the camels and things like that. And they they had this, um, it's a contraption, the, the, shrine, the shrine clowns. They had this contraption called the shaky baker. And actually what it is, it's just a stove. And they wheeled it out. <clears throat> they wheeled it out. And the clown says, well, what, what do we add? Flour. Okay, so he brought out a bouquet of flowers. Not that kind of flour, I don't think. Um, and then he says, well, we need sugar. Okay. You know, he was chasing them around, trying to kiss them. It was funny. And then towards the end of the, the uh, routine that they were doing, the skit, boom, it, like a loud bang, and everybody jumped. And it was funny. Yeah, but it was it was a wonderful time. I love the Shrine Circus for many reasons. I love going because, you know, I, like I said, I've been going for the past 15 years, but the Shrine Circus supports Shriners Hospitals for Children. It's all charity. And I just like going. It gets me out of the house for a few hours. I don't dwell so much or think so much about the things that have been bothering me. Um it's, it's just a nice way to relax and enjoy a few hours of entertainment and to see the, the, the kids having fun. You know, they had the kids were, had, had the face painting on. They were laughing, having a good time. We were laughing and having a good time. Yeah. It was, it was really, really fun. And it, it just, it takes our minds off of other things. I, I look at it this way, this once a year, yeah. we're able to just get the <clears throat> kid out in us. You have to sometimes. And it you know? works. It helps. The Chicago boys were really good. Um, the guys who do the jump roping, they're really good. Dad and I can't remember the little one. We thought he was newer to the I think he was. Group. Probably one of their sons or maybe a little brother or something. I'm thinking it was one of their kids. One of the guys, the Chicago boys, it was one of their sons. Because I don't remember the little kid being in, in, the, no. in the act. No. Uh, but they they never they never disappoint. The Chicago boys oh, are no. really good. They had the, of course they had the human pyramid, the um, bicycles on the high wire, the balancing act, yeah. and I uploaded a video uh, of that to my channel here. But it, we, we had a lot of fun, and I'm already looking forward to going back. The picture of Dad. Yeah, with, with the, the with the clown nose. Yeah. 
Can you please send that to my phone? Yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. Yep. I have Thank the picture. You. I have the picture stored in my cell phone. I'll just send it to you in a text. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um. Oh, and and something else that was funny at the circus. They were doing a little survey, if you will. Which side of the arena could be the loudest? Boys versus girls. And uh, one of the clowns decided, oh, the girls win. And the other clown says, yeah, but the girls have bigger mouths than the boys. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you shouldn't have gone there. You shouldn't have gone there. Um, we all laugh about it, though. But it's, a, it's, all, funny. it's all in good humor. Everybody's having a good time. Um, well, I, I will say, though, the concessions, I want to talk about that for a minute. There was a lady that sat in the next row in front of us, beneath us, and she had kids with her. She spent $7 because it was $7 for one beer, but she bought, what was it, two beers or three beers? She bought, she bought two for herself. Two for herself. And then one for herself. Or two... Two for herself and one for, I think it was her sister or yeah. friend that was with her. $21 for three beers. I could buy a 30-pack for that much money. <laughs> that, that's, uh, what, wasn't that what we told her? And then yeah. Happened. They're like, well. <laughs> yeah, th I understand that um, they do things that, you know, for charity. But seven dollars for a beer? There's no way I would spend that kind of money for one beer. Remember the swords? Oh, those toys, the, the, the toy swords that light up. Yeah, yeah. They had the little squares in them or yeah. diamonds or what? Ten bucks for yeah. that. They're expensive, and I understand it, it, they're private vendors, and they're trying to make money, and it's for a good cause. I understand that, but at what cost? Yeah. You know, I mean it. A bottle of water for three bucks. Yeah, it, it's expensive. It is expensive, and they, ha, you know, they do. They've done things really differently this year. Um, they entered different. Yeah, we went through what's called the red room at the Dow Vent Center. We've never, we didn't have to do this last year. We had um, one other year. We we went through a metal detector, of course, because now they mandate that with safety and everything yeah. safety precautions but last year we never went through the red room no. we went right through the through the you know when you go through the metal detectors and you go this way oh. and they had the doors i know what was in the red room and then you go up the flight of stairs remember when we went to the monster trucks yeah they had afterwards all the guys in the red room yeah to do autographs right but there was no one it was just the clones yeah but see, usually, because usually last year when we went in, into, into the arena, yeah. we just went through the doors yep. and they scanned the ticket and they usually pulled the ticket stub off. Yeah, and, and they didn't even do they that. Just, they just scanned it and handed the whole ticket back to us. Yeah. Things have changed so much. They, they've really the done year. things differently this year. Yeah. They've really done things differently this year. Um, but, you know, I still had a good time. And I, um, the reason it, it had taken me so long because dad and Amy had already went out, you know, before everybody started to leave at the end of the show, you guys were already gone. I decided to sit, stick around for a little while, um, and try to get in every last drop of entertainment that I could get. I wanted to get my money's worth. And so I did. Um, and on the way out, <clears throat> because the last little act that they had, Snowball, which was a great big, like, like a giant polar bear, a person in a polar bear suit, uh, which I thought was really cool. He'd come out dancing, and, and the ringmaster says, come on, Snowball, come on, we got to go. And he's kind of, you know, and they're playing uh, Taylor Swift Shake It Off, and he's dancing, you know. And I, I'll, I'll upload a, the video to that because I captured that on video too. There's pizza. <laughs> when he starts walking out real fast, oh, pizza. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll upload a video of that because I managed to capture that on video. That was pretty cool. I have to check that video out. The Shrine Circus, um, they they come to Flint first and then they go to Saginaw. And, 
a lot of my friends took their kids to the Shrine Circus. And it's, it's, it's. Matter of fact, I think we had a friend who going today. Yeah, they're going because he wasn't sure if he wanted to go to the afternoon show or the evening mm -hmm. show. Dad and I suggested the afternoon, you know, which I think is at two o'clock. Yeah, and for younger kids. Yeah. It, it, this child's age. Yeah. I think the afternoon would be better. Yeah. And that's what we suggested. They start getting cranky and yeah. irritable because they're tired. Yeah. I mean, look at us. We didn't get home until like 11 it was late. o'clock at night. It was and late. All we did is went there and came home. Yeah. But we didn't get out of there until 9, 9.30. Yeah. Well, I stuck around for a few minutes afterwards yeah. just to see, to get the last look of the arena and every, you know, all the contraptions and everything you know, they had. We went out and had a cigarette and on top of a cigarette. We yeah. We get the van warm for you. Yeah. And it was, it was bone chilling cold. It was bone chilling cold. Trying to cross Johnson Street, uh, it was all ice and I had to take my time and the people who were the traffic on Johnson Street, I think they were getting irritable because they had to wait for me. Well, I'm not going to rush across an icy street and take a chance of slipping. And top it all off, the street is not made no. like a normal street. It's a, it's a brick street, it's I a, think. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's a, made out of bricks. Yeah. It's like the one they had in Owasso. That's yeah. Made. Like Saginaw Street in Flint where it's all bricks. Yeah. Um, but the dial vents, well, the walkway, I know, especially the walkway is made of brick. But I wasn't about to hurry up and go because other people were in a hurry and impatient and, and couldn't wait. Um, but I, I had a lot of fun. I'm already looking forward to going next year. And um, some other events. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not forgetting about it. Yeah, I'm not going to get specific on what's coming up in February, but just know that uh, I'm going to be a part of it. I've been asked to come back to do it. I'm okay, not going to know what you're talking about. Yeah, you ain't gotta yeah I'm not going to get specific about anything, but um, I've been asked to come back again and volunteer. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then in April, they're having, uh, the ABC 12 family expo, which is on Saturday, April 13th. Still don't know who's headlining this event. They have not given any information on that. And you got dad's birthday. Right? Yeah. Dad's birthday is on April 6th, but, but events, um, the ABC 12 family expo. And then my little thing I'm, I've been asked to come back and do in February. So. I've got things coming up. I've been in a pretty good mood. I haven't been on Facebook a whole lot, which kind of helps to reduce the anxiety. And, and uh, you know, you don't have all that to contend with because the less you look at Facebook and even YouTube. I mean, I, I come on YouTube to watch videos like that, you know, because I like the Beatles. And I like to listen to, you know, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr. I like to listen to them talk. I like to listen to George Harrison and John Lennon. I like to listen to the interviews and, and to hear what their ideas are. You know, life during the Beatles, after the Beatles, and and things like that. I'm a, I'm a big Beatles fanatic. I don't talk about that a lot, but I like the Beatles. And uh, so I, I like watching YouTube, and I, I get some other information. Uh, YouTube taught me how to tie a tie. <laughs> I, I, that was something else I was going to mention because um, I have a, well, a tie. I noticed you wearing it, but I didn't. Yeah, because I, 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 I've never really known how to tie a tie. And it's like, well, okay, I'm going to try this. So what I decided to do was just, you know, watch the instructional video and I'm just kind of tinkering. Ah, okay, I got it. So now what I need to do is I need to get a suit which I have a suit, but I want to get like a nice red suit and a nice white dress shirt and a red tie and uh, some red pants, you know, and then it'll go with my, maybe, maybe 
if I go to the right place, you know. Well, no, now we're talking thousands, but um, I don't have thousands. I couldn't afford a, a, a tuxedo, just like a regular, like a suit. Like I had worn it at Aunt Rhonda's funeral. Yeah. I didn't get that at a tuxedo shop. Um, you might have to check where you got that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go back and uh, see if they have any, like, you know, nice red suits. Now that I know how to tie a tie, I feel confident in buying a suit. <laughs> you know, tr or at least trying to find, like, a nice red suit. Uh, but, yeah. You can learn a lot from YouTube, but I've I've not been on Facebook too much, um, you know. And when people hear this, they they're gonna think, "Well, gee, what are you hiding?" Nothing. I'm not hiding anything. I just I'm not on Facebook as much. I have my Facebook account. I interact with my friends every so often, but I'm not on it. You know, every five minutes, checking my what my friends are up to or well, it's me. I've been updating it lately did I go on and play games on my phone or on my iPad. <clears throat> right. I just talk to only certain people. You know, and I have friends that I can text to. You know, like if I'm not on Facebook I can text them and say, Hey, how you doing? It's just me and them one on one. It doesn't have to be everybody in on our conversation. Which is what I like. I like the one on one time. And, uh, you know, I, I still have friends that want me to come back and people that want me to come and hang with them for a weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I'm having a lot of fun uh, with, uh, you know, talking to my friends and, and going out having fun. The less, the, the less I spend on Facebook, the less time I spend on Facebook, it seems like the happier I am, the better off I am. It's because when I look at Facebook, and I'm, you know, a lot of people do this. When you get on Facebook, you look at Facebook and you're comparing your life to other people. And it's like, well, that, man, my life sucks. Look at all the stuff they're doing. You know, they're, they're being treated like God. And look at me over here. I'm, I'm just a nobody. Well, that's not true. Um, I am somebody in the world. I may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I am somebody. And, uh, you know. I have friends, a very small circle of friends. I don't need to be Mr. Popularity, but the people who know me and, and the friends that I still have, um, they're all I need. <coughs> so, um, yeah, I'm doing okay. I've, I've been doing quite well, actually. No, I've been doing pretty good myself. I had written a new poem called while I was away but I haven't really gone anywhere it's just just one of those poems that you know came to mind and I've you know I I, I wanted to talk about this too for a minute um, so I was under scrutiny uh, recently for a poem that I'd written two years ago um, Someone, because I write poems for the, for the warriors, for the cancer kids. Now, I did not have permission to upload the poem video to my YouTube channel. Okay. And I'll give them that. I, I'll admit to that right now. Clear as day. I did not have permission to do it. But the, the, the parents, you know, not only are they saying, well, you didn't have permission to do it, but now they're trying to say that I was being suggestive in the poem that I was meaning something deeper that would be inappropriate you know what I mean oh, yeah and that's just clearly not true I don't write suggestive poem not not to children uh -uh. now if I was writing a poem to say I don't know a woman a lady friend of mine uh yeah that's different because here's the thing with poetry like if I'm, I, I've written a poem for, matter of fact, I've written a poem for uh, a, a woman. She's not a, a, a young lady. She's a woman. <clears throat> She's older than me by a few years. Um, I'd written a poem for her. 
And it was very, you know, it had the sensual add to it. You know what I mean? And that's why I didn't upload that to my channel because it may not have been appropriate for younger viewers because it was written in a way that, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But, but I wasn't I wasn't straight on with, <coughs> with you know, talking about adult pleasures. Yeah. Now, when it comes to kids... You know, I, I say the word, I use the word love a lot in the poetry, right? Of course I love kids. I, I, I hate to see kids go through things that, I, especially things that I had gone through. And I express my sentiment through a poem saying, I would take your place in a second if I could. And that's really all I'm saying. There's, you know, switch places with you in your bed was one of the, was one of the lines in the poem I had written. I'm talking about a hospital bed. What bed did you think I was talking about? Right? I'm not talking about anything else deeper or further or adult-like to a little girl. It's it's a poem for a cancer warrior. I would trade places with you in your bed, meaning your hospital bed, because I've been in that bed when I was a kid. That's all I was saying. I would I would trade places with you in a heartbeat. I would kiss your tears away, you know, tears of pain. Because there's nothing glorious about childhood cancer. It's painful. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. But I will give them that, you know, I did not have permission to upload the video, the poem video to my YouTube channel. I own responsibility for that. I hope you accept my apology. I did not have permission to upload the poem video, and I'm sorry. I do apologize. I did not mean to, um, you know, it was just a miscalculation, a misjudgment, and I do apologize, and I own up to that publicly. But to say that I'm writing suggestive poems to little kids, that is a crock of shit. I would never write a poem uh, that would be suggestive to children. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. And this has been going on for far too long with these people who are, you know, they have nothing better to do. Yeah. So I wanted to get that out into the open. I wanted to clear the air. Um, but anyway, I'll also use this time to remind all of you to visit GuideStar.org because last week you thought I forgot to mention GuideStar.org. Mm -hmm. and I, I, actually, I actually didn't forget because you were sitting in, the, in that very spot on the couch off camera when I said it. GuideStar.org has a complete and comprehensive listing of all the 501c3 nonprofit organizations and LLCs that have been approved by the United States federal government. Don't be fooled. Don't be duped. Visit GuideStar.org today. Now, at the end of the, this week's video, you're not going to remind me to say visit GuideStar, right? Although, they could appreciate the second plug. I, I was actually in the kitchen. Yeah, you were in the kitchen. And you, you hollered out from the kitchen, don't forget to visit GuideStar! Well, I've already done that. <laughs> I've already done that. Thank you. I got my uh, dusk light on this week, but I think the battery is going dead because the light really isn't as bright. Yep, we'll have to get another one. Is it? Yeah. Hopefully it ain't a watch battery it takes. I'm not sure what kind of battery it takes. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, they can see the light. That's my dust light that I'm using. The battery, I think, is going dead. Um, but it is going to be very, very extremely brutally cold this week. Um, the winter storm that we're expecting, I think, is supposed to hit tomorrow. Yeah. They've bumped up the uh, accumulation that we're expected to get, 8 to 12 inches. A foot of snow, whatever will we do? I know we'll shovel our way out like we do any other year when we get no hit with a winter storm. Yeah, the, no the, the county yeah. trucks are going to come through and salt the road. I, I had saw something on Facebook. I had seen something on Facebook. Proper grammar here. I had seen something on Facebook. A guy invented a, a flamethrower. I don't know if you saw that. Uh -uh. <coughs> he invented a, a flamethrower 
and it melts all the snow and the ice. And then you just have a wet street, you know, the, the snow melts in the water and there's condensation, you know. Uh, but he invented like a, a flamethrower and he melts all the snow out of his driveway and all the ice. Um, cool. But, you know, although you melt ice and snow, there's still going to be standing water. And if it's cold outside, it's going to refreeze back over into ice. So I'm wondering if that, if, does that defeat the purpose of having a flamethrower? I said snowblower, didn't I? Yeah. Flamethrower. See, I <laughs> I get talking, and I, I, I get caught up in my work. No, a flamethrower. It defeats the purpose, um, I, I think. But it, it would be convenient temporarily, because if it's really super cold outside. Major snow Monday into Tuesday for Midwest. Yeah, because if it's really super cold outside, the standing water is just going to refreeze back into ice. We're looking at 8 to 12. Yeah, 8 to 12 inches. Plus. 8 to 12 plus. 8 to 12 plus. So we could exceed a foot of snow. That's really, 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 really. Oh, my God. What are we going to do with snow? We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Actually, with, with, a, with a slight... Um, with a slight exception to that, we're going to be fine. What about the people who are homeless? I agree. They're going to be in this 40 below wind chill <laughs> weather. And Dangerously, deadly cold weather. They get maybe shelters <clears throat> out there, but they don't hold enough. They don't have enough space for all the homeless. You know, and, and personally, I think what they need to do, like in Saginaw and Flint, the bigger cities, you know, all these abandoned homes and abandoned buildings, they're just sitting there. They're vacant. They're not being used for anything else. Make them into homeless shelters. Get the homeless off the streets. Yep. You got <coughs> schools out there that no one's got. Yeah, I mean, like these old schools that have been sitting and they're abandoned and they're vacant. Don't bulldoze them to the ground. Make them into homeless shelters. Make them, you know, get the homeless people off the streets. Give them a nice warm roof over their head. Give them some nice clothes. Help them to get back on their feet. Um, and don't send me hate mail. Oh, Jared, you don't know anything about homeless. <laughs> well, actually, I do. I lived in a car when I was a child, so I know quite a bit about what it is to be homeless. But not living in, in the streets, you know, that's a different... Right. That's a different phase of, of being homeless. Um, but it is a real problem. And, and you know, I, I I wish my house was big enough. I wish I had all the food in the world. I would take in all these homeless women and men and children. I'd feed them. I'd take care of them. But I, I'm having a hard enough time taking care of myself. <laughs> it, it's the... How would you say that? I feel like we're in recession again. Or, yeah. A recession or a depression it, or yeah. something like that. I mean, it goes, <coughs> you can't really afford anything anymore. Everything has gone up. The prices of everything has gone up. You know, and then you got your middle and your low class that are. Shove, shove the side, never again. Yeah, we, we, um, it's not easy for anybody, especially with this government shutdown. Well, I guess Trump decided to reopen the government for, oh, did he? for three weeks. <laughs> three Whoa. weeks. Because not of this wall business. Every, that long enough for everyone to get food stamps, probably, and then. I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not a political person and I really don't offer a lot of political opinion on Facebook or here on YouTube or elsewhere. I, I don't, I, I said this last week though, and I'm going to say it again. I think it's really, really unprofessional and not worthy of the label of leader. And it doesn't in any way imply leadership 
when you're going to hold an entire nation financially hostage to get what you want. Yeah. It's I, not fair to everybody. I don't support that. There's a lot of... Now, I have a lot of friends who are Trump supporters, and that's up to them that, you know, I'm not going to argue politics with them because there are, there are people who, on Facebook, as petty as it is, they will block and delete each other because they have differences of political opinion. Well, why can't people just have their own opinions and still be friends and just say, you know what, yeah. we can agree to disagree on this subject and we can go our separate ways on the issue, but we can still be friends. Right. What happened to that? We, we don't do that. People are so petty uh -uh. and they act like well, grown ass kids stomping their feet, crossing their arms. Well, you don't agree with me, then talk to the hand. Well, that's a, that's a bunch of shit. Well, that's even like back in the 80s and that, you know, you used to be able to see someone on the side of the road. Yeah. And be able to stop and help them. Yeah. I, now you got to sit and say, okay, do I go by? Do I try to stop and help? Do that's I the world we live about, in. With it, about having a you gun know, or something? Even when I was a kid, even when I was little, because I grew up in the 90s, and even if we, you know, dad saw someone broke down the side of the road, he stopped. Yeah. There was no thought about, gee, are they packing a piece? Or are they going to mug me? What are they going to do? No, we just, we would stop and help people. We yeah. People are afraid anymore. I mean, what kind of world is that to live in? To constantly be afraid of, of you know? Everything. It's, it's sad yeah. and it's scary to think that you know, if I'm in need of help, no one's going to take me seriously. They're going to leave me broke down on the side of the road. What if I What if I had children with me? And that, that actually has happened. Where I got a flat tire and I had kids with me in my van. And it's like, shit, now what? And that was out on M13. That was over the summer. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I had, um, the, because it was the, the girls that Angel was babysitting. Oh, okay. I had them with me because they wanted to ride with me. They had the, the choice, do they want to ride with dad or did they want to ride with me? They chose to ride with me. Actually, it was the two girls, the two of the three girls I had with me, and then the other girl rode with dad. But it, it scared me because it's like, I'm not scared for me. I'm scared for these kids because I have kids and I'm broke down on the side of the road. What the hell am I going to do? And luckily, dad came back. But, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the fact of, <clears throat> you don't know this world anymore. What's gonna happen, you know, because when we're when we're dead and gone, the children of today are gonna be the ones to take it over. Yeah. When we're dead and gone. But what's gonna happen in their situation? What's gonna what well, I mean this world, I mean like all these older generation of people, these elderly people who die, I feel sad. It's heartbreaking. Because they are the generation that molded our generation, yeah. my generation, dad's, yours. They molded and shaped our generations. That older generation is dying off. This world is, you can see the shift. Yeah. You can see, you can, you can see the shift, whatever's going on in the air. You can, you can smell it. There's something going on. There's a shift. And the shift, I, I think, which is really predominantly noticeable is the fact that the older generations dying off the ones who are the most well-educated they grew up in a different time and we didn't have all this technology we didn't have instagram and facebook and snapchat and twitter and youtube we didn't have all these things back then we didn't have ipads and ipods and and we had we had so pee, we had pee pods that's it yeah. um because like my grandmother she she lived you know, she was born in 1925, so she was a bit of a, a land pioneer. She grew her own crops and she made her own food. Everything was made from scratch. I think it's a dying art. Yeah. You know, people are too dependent on convenience. It's all a matter of convenience. Now, the, our, the, when the older generation is really gone permanently forever... I just hate to see what this world is going to come to when the older generation is completely extinct. Yeah. When we're gone, when I'm gone, when you're gone, when dad's gone, what is going to happen to this world? It scares me. 
But of course, when I'm dead and gone, I'm not going to care. <laughs> I'm going to be dead. Right. I'm not going to care what, what goes on in the world. But it's just a scary thought. Even today, you see it. Um, and we have, it, it's, and like I said, I, I don't talk much about politics on Facebook. I don't talk much politics on my YouTube channel. I don't even talk politics at the bar. That's the last place you want to discuss politics is at a bar. Around people who are drinking. Um, yeah, because you're going to end up getting back. There's going to be a fight ensued with yeah. the aid of alcohol. If, if not verbal, physical. Yeah. There's, there's going to be some altercation, especially if you're inebriated and you're having these discussions. Um, I, I don't much understand how we have a, a supposed to be a leader who holds an entire country uh, an entire country in a financial hostage situation to get what he wants yeah i refill my coffee cup if you would please i don't think we have creamer no we don't i'll drink a black it's fine and the milk we got is no good i'm not yeah <laughs> um i found that out the hard way yesterday but anyway um I, I, to all my friends who are watching this, if you're Trump supporters, please don't block me. It's just my opinion. You know, I I, I could care less who you support. Yeah. <laughs> the two cats. Because <laughs> one's male, one's female. And they're actually getting along. Well, maybe it's time they started to get along. You know, it's time for people to come together. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my little my little input on that. Uh, but the government, I guess Trump decided to reopen the government for three weeks. <laughs> uh, wow, three weeks. It's, I mean, it's it's something because you know, I mean, I, I have friends who work. Um, it, you know, they're, they've been furloughed. And so it's a sigh of relief that man, they're going to get to go back to work and they're going to get paychecks. That's, that's wonderful. That's great. But the, I have friends who also don't agree with Trump's decision to even close the government down in the first place. Um, and they're not Trump supporters either. Thank you. Yep. Hot, hot coffee. But um, yeah, if you're a Trump supporter, that that's that's your that's your business. Uh, and if you're not a Trump supporter, again, that's your business. I you know either way, I'm not political, but I just think it's I just think it's shitty that we have a, a president, a, a, a leader who um, that's not worthy of leadership to hold the people hostage. Until you get what you want. Sounds like a spoiled man child to me. I see him for a cigarette. Are you out of smokes? Yeah. Oh, well. That could be a problem. Uh, I was hoping Dad would have been awake so he could join us, but I know I, th it. I think he's just listening in on our conversation. I think so too because it seems kind of funny the last time he ended up popping up towards the end, remember? And he he said uh, I, I think it was after I stopped recording. I, it, it wasn't last week because he was with us last week. Oh, I think it was a, the, end. the week before. Um, yeah, it was towards the end, but I think it was the week before. He said, well, I, I heard everything you said. I was just lying, lying here being quiet. Well, yeah. get up. Be a part of the conversation. I agree. You know, um, dad, he's he's a political person. Uh, I. And then his, he comes up and says, well, I was up at such and such time with the dogs. Yeah. <sighs> I'm still kind of tired. <laughs> It's been a it's been a great week. Well, <laughs> Friday was was Friday was the best day of the week. I think I had I had a good morning already. It's it's been so far so good. Um, 
I got a phone call, or I actually got a phone call in the middle of the night, turned around and called the person back. And it turned out to be a good call. That's good. That's good. Phone calls are, you know, when you talk to your friends or you get a text message or, or even a message on Messenger on Facebook. And especially when it's someone you've nice. heard from in a long time. Yeah, it's, it's nice, you know. It's nice to get good morning greetings and yeah. It was a long conversation. I was done. So are we? Um, do you think we're gonna be okay for the winter storm that's supposed oh, to? Oh yeah. We're yeah. Everybody's freaking out on Facebook. They're they're doing those angry face emojis. Their their reactions to the posts. Um, and I said, look, come on, you know, it, it's Michigan. And like I said, some of them may not know Michigan as well. As yeah. Some of them, some of them do live out of state and you know, they, they haven't been here their entire lives like I have, yeah, some of them. but they've been here long enough to know, um, that we do get rough you know, brutal weather. Then again, some of them may be <coughs> the ones that just come here for yeah. to escape what they like, got down there. Like my stepdad, he's originally from Northern California. He's not used to uh, mm -mm. the snow and the cold. And when he first moved here from, from California, he's like, what the hell is this shit? Yeah, even still today? Yeah, he's like, man, this weather sucks. Uh, Jimmy, you know, it, it's... It, it's Michigan. It's what? our weather. This is typical but for us. We don't have stuff like this in California. Well, we're not in California what? anymore. <laughs> we're not in California anymore. Um, we're in the Midwest now. You're in the mitten. Uh, we get thunder and lightning with blizzards here. That's how wacky our weather is. Well, my nephew lives in Kentucky. And here we ain't got no snow last night or anything. Yeah. And he's got a blizzard. Yeah, I mean, we we can literally look, you know, we can look out our bedroom windows before we go to bed. We wake up the next morning, we'll have a foot of snow on the ground. Yeah. That's Michigan. It can be green. We when can we have go to bed, <coughs> up and we're white. Remember that I think it was back in 2009. Or 2010. It was when you were still living up at, at, at uh, Metalwood Village. 2010, 2011. It was. It was on. It was on Christmas Day. We had thunderstorms. Yeah. We had thunder and lightning on Christmas Day. Yep. I, I'll never forget it. Um. It was really weird. It, it was. It was weird, but it's like, well, it, it is Michigan. We get some whacked out weather here, because we had a very uh, unseasonably mild winter that year yeah and christmas day was no exception we had very warm very mild temperatures and, and you know how they say it comes in like a lion goes out like yeah. a lamb whatever yeah okay comes in like a lion goes out like a lamb or comes in like a lamb goes out like a lion yeah yeah so with it being white like it is uh-huh does that mean it's coming in like a lion oh i don't know i i i have never got the I think just to that. I think what what they mean by that is like the the change in the seasons, like between spring and summer. Like if if it comes in like a lamb, it's pleasant. Or no, if it goes out like a lamb, it's the changeover from spring to summer is pleasant. Then it comes in like a lamb. I I don't know. Now I'm and now I'm confused. I, I know. Or is it is it does it mean that on the on the final day of spring, the weather is pleasant, so it goes out like a lamb. But the first day of summer, according to the calendar, severe weather, so it comes in like a lion. It's weird. Well, that's just like your groundhog. If it sees its shadow, we have six more weeks of winter. If it don't, we we have six more weeks of winter regardless. Yeah. I don't. I I don't I know. I let the groundhog it's, predict. Punk, Punxsutawney Phil, uh, <laughs> from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, deter, uh, determines 
But regardless of, of if he sees a shadow, irrespective of seeing a shadow, we get six more weeks of freaking winter. Yeah, it doesn't know. matter if the damn thing sees a shadow or not. We're going to get the extra six weeks of winter. Yeah. I Personally, I think that's just a waste of time. I, I, yeah. I do not understand that myself. I I, I don't even understand if, either. Even if you don't get the six weeks, you know, even if you don't get the six weeks of winter, you would at least maybe get the six weeks extra of summer. Or spring. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Uh I don't I don't comprehend either any of that. If I, someone to can me explain it's, it to us on that end, yeah. Please do so. Because I have friends who are who are um well one in particular, he is the chief meteorologist at WJRT in Flint. His name is J.R. Kurtak. Good buddy of mine. <clears throat> and and he 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 explains things to me that it's like well I I don't quite understand what what that means you know and he'll explain I mean he's really he's really good at explaining things but of course he'd have to be he's a television meteorologist he would have to know yeah. how to answer a question uh, regarding uh, weather and and um, uh, you know. Things to do with the atmosphere. Yeah. And things like that. Um, well, like I said, maybe if he watches this video. Uh, I doubt if he watches my YouTube videos, but I can email him. I have his email address. I'll ask him. What is that? Why Why do we bother so much with the groundhog? Yeah. What? I mean, we're going to get the, the six. Lion and the lamb. Yeah, we're going to get the six weeks of winter. Regardless of the damn thing sees its shadow, what well, I mean, because according to the calendar, the 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 um, I think it's the vernal equinox, oh, yeah. which would be spring. Um, there's a it, it occurs on a certain day according to the calendar. I think it's the vernal equinox. I, I hope I said that right. I could be wrong. I, I don't want to be. Google, Google. Yeah, here I come, Google. Brace yourself. Here I come. I, I'm pretty sure the vernal equinox is, is referring to spring. <clears throat> the vernal equinox. Yep, the equinox in spring on about March 20th in the northern hemisphere and September 22nd in the southern hemisphere. The equinox in March. So it is the spring. I was right. Um, so I guess that answers the question. Because we're in the northern hemisphere, um, we're in North America. Well, <laughs> it's two different concepts. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I, I'll have to email Jr. and ask him. What 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 is it, man? man? Is it just for fun? Like, is it just a perk that we've had for all these years? Yeah. And at long last, we discover that it really doesn't mean shit. That it's just all for fun and games. Well, if Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow, tell Punxsutawney Phil to go have a beer. <laughs> I don't care if he saw his shadow. It, so what? Yeah. And they make it all big on TV. Yeah, it, it's it's world news. It, you know what's really material, sad about which is TV nowadays. A lot of things are sad and about television nowadays, your, but continue. Your kids are on the watching TV, on the laptops, computers, on yeah, on the phone, you know. Yeah. Well, how are they learning? Well, I mean, they they have um. In their defense, I mean, I will say that there are some programs on the iPad. Or iPod or whatever the hell it's called. iPad. iPad. Tablet. um, Tablets. There are some games on there that are educational, informative, and they well, yeah. they learn. Um, but you know, and I see what you're saying because well, I mean cartoons. Oh, I I watched cartoons when I was a kid. Yeah. Every Saturday morning. Yeah. Bowl of Cheerios, bowl of kicks, Bugs Bunny but and. Look at some of the cartoons though nowadays, the violence and all. Yeah, there's a lot of violence and, and a lot of things. Yeah, even um, adult shows. Um, 
some like some of the, the you know going back to what we were talking about um some of the programs or some of the games are educational informative for the younger um for the younger audience the, the younger kids like they have the leapfrog they've had the leapfrog yeah. games for i don't know how many years um but those are informative educational a lot of the other things like my my cousins they you know they're young kids by the way they watch youtube videos mm -hmm. of some of the most dangerous and the most disgusting and just idiotic shit yeah it's like why is this funny and, to you and yeah and they think it's funny where we think it's stupid yeah I mean, it, people could just as well watch my YouTube channel and listen to me talk and, oh, that Jared Buller is stupid. Well, that's your opinion. You know, you don't have to, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch. Well, but Even some of the music today. Yeah. The language. Yeah. I mean, in the 90s, we, or even in the 80s, you know, Run DMC, they kind of, you know, there was swearing and, and rap music uh, and all the other stuff. That we, you know, because I, re I, I remember the, a lot of the music of the 90s. There was a lot really of swearing. You hear a lot of kill your mama, kill your papa, kill your children. Raping and killing. Yeah, you didn't hear like 187. No. Anyway, come on. No, I see what you're saying. But the, I don't know if you remember. It's a classic rock song by Nazareth that's called Hair of the Dog. Uh -uh. Now you're messing with the son of a bitch. Oh. Yeah. How often back then would you hear swearing? Yeah, you in, wouldn't. In classic rock, but I mean, that's an anthem. I, I, I would dare say that Hair of the Dog by Nazareth is an anthem. It's from the 70s, but it is a rock anthem. It's oh, like yeah. one, of, one of my favorite songs. Um, you have to play it and you're rated. You, you, you rarely ever... Back then, they sing about peace and love, like in the 60s, you know, the Beatles, yeah. and I was talking about the Beatles at the top of the video. Um, well, not at the top, maybe midway. They didn't talk about raping and killing. They talked about peace, love, understanding the way, you know, the Vietnam War, and, you know, protest songs, anti-war. Back then, that's all you heard. Yeah. Because the music of that time was speaking about the generation of that time. It was the newspaper that was being... Uh, you know, a message was being sent through music and poetry. Yeah. That's what I love about the 60s generation. I'm so envious of my parents because they were kids in the 60s. I was the 70s. And, and I don't really remember it. They had a lot of, like, the soft rock come out, I think, in the 70s. Soft rock, classic rock. My mom always listened to, like, Johnny Cash. Country music, yeah. 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 Now she was into Nashville, Tennessee, and all that. Like um, Nazareth and Kiss and Led Zeppelin, that was yeah. all. You they know. all came to me like in the eighties. Yeah, but they they first debuted. Well, they a lot of them first debuted like in the late sixties. Like Fleetwood Mac, they came out in the late sixties, but they were really popular in the seventies. Like ABBA, you know, they were yeah. popular in the seventies. Bee Gees. Um, they were good, you know, they were famous in the 60s, but in the 70s, they really, really started to get good. There's all, you know, all these musical talents like Buffalo Springfield and uh, all, all these just very talented people. And, and, and it takes me back, Amy. It takes me back to the topic where I had mentioned when all the older generation's gone. Yeah. Who, you know. Things have changed so much. Well, the older generation of music, um, like what my parents grew up listening to, that music was, it, it was like the, um, I would say it was like the credit union of the generation because it was for the people by the people. Uh -huh. You know, the music was written for the people by the people. It was, they were voicing their opinions they were sharing artistic ideas and they did it in such a way that was so fine-tuned um the mamas and the papas you know another wonderful group I, I have their greatest hit cd um there were just so many wonderful musical talents back then and when they combined art like painting and drawing with music like the beatles did 
Now that was really cool. You know, yellow submarine. Yeah. That was all, you know, drawing, painting. It was art. And then they mix music in with that. Hell yeah. I, I love that. I love that because even when I was a kid, when I was younger, I loved to write. I loved to draw. I loved to, you know, you know how they have like those random designs and you just color them in. Yeah. I loved doing those when I was a kid. I loved coloring those, those designs, you know, that they're just black and white. And then you just shade them in like with color pencil or marker or whatever. Yeah. I loved doing that when I was a kid. So I have, I've always been kind of a, an artist, I guess, in some ways. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off track. I'm just ranting. Um, Don't we always? When we can't think of anything to... Yeah. And, and, and you know, because I this, this coming November, I've been writing, I'll be writing journals for 20 years. And even I've noticed the changes that have happened since... You know, how things have changed dramatically since, like, the late 90s when I started writing journals. <clears throat> Everything has changed so much. I can look back on a, on something I had written back in 2002, 2003. It's like, wow, that's where my head was back then. That's yeah. what I was doing back then. I was very well involved um, in, in writing journals, poetry, things like that. I, I think we all just kind of, like, get to where eventually we slack off. Yeah, we, we, we find... We, we drift away and find different ways to... We find different avenues, different interests. Um, but, uh, you know, we went to the Shrine Circus on Friday, and yeah. that was the first road list I've done in my journal, and who knows how long. Usually I, you're behind the wheel, and you're not able yeah, to Yeah, I can't list. write and drive at the same time. Um, but... But you could video. And yeah. Every time you, yeah, yeah, I could um, do a road list that way. But yeah, it's uh, things have things have really changed. But all your friends that aren't from around here would get lost. <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of the reason why you know, like why I uh, when I go different places in Michigan or places I've been a million times, I'll videotape. You know, I'll have my cell phone and I'll record the trip I'm going, you know. Yeah. Because there's lots of people who live out of state. And, if you know, they see me talk about it on Facebook a lot, the, these places. Or if I mention it in my YouTube videos, they kind of want to know what the what these places look like. So I try to right. offer a little bit of that um, just to show some highlights of what the city looks like or what the town looks like. Um, yeah, that's what I like to do. I, I miss those things, times, though. I used to do road lists all the time in my journal, but like you said, I, I, now I'm the one yeah, behind grown, the wheel. Yeah, you've grown up and you're behind the wheel, so it's quite hard to do a road it, list. You know, I, I can remember too, like being 14, 15, writing thoughts in my journal. Nowhere near are they as insightful they may have been insightful for me at that time, mm -hmm. but now that I'm going to be 33 in July and I'm still writing, I've been writing journals since I was 13, by the way, I see how much my thought processes have changed over the course of 20 years. You know, like what, what I thought back then, I don't think now. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, um, one of the most amazing things about writing journals, no, keeping I a diary. Well, I don't keep diaries. Most people do. But, did, did you start younger than that? I started writing, writing. I started writing journals when I was thirteen, but like little rhymes, poetry. I've been writing. Actually, I've been writing little made-up stories and things since I was like seven, eight. Oh yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I've been writing riddles and things since I was, I'd say, probably eight, nine, ten years old. Oh. But I just, it's never been presented publicly. Right. Now that I'm older and I have more insight 
and I know how to explain things, which is why I, I wanted to mention that about the poem, because, you know, people look at it like it's something horrible that I had written about or dedicated something, you know, suggestive to a, a child, which is just entirely not true. Um, the thing about poetry is that poetry is subject to interpretation. And if I could just be straightforward in my poetry and say, you know, I'm not proclaiming love. I'm just saying that I would take your place if I could. That's my way of saying, I understand this journey. I understand your pain, which is why, really why I write poetry for the, for the cancer kids. Have you ever uh, thought that maybe there are some people out there that doesn't understand? Yeah, they don't, they don't understand. And that's why and I, that's I, why they don't. The they jump to conclusions, which, uh, and, and I, I can sympathize, and, and I've given that a lot of thought, which I'm glad you brought that up. Of course, I've given that a lot of thought. You know, a, there's a lot of parents out there, uh, you know, because they're very protective of their children, and I would never in any way attack protecting children. I don't attack child protection. I've right. never put child protection down. Right. I support it now more than ever because of the way the world is there's there's a lot of actual real creeps in the world uh, as a matter of fact there, I, I just read on facebook that um there one of my friends had posted that there was a guy in a local dollar general who was looking at an underage girl in a provocative way and smiling about it and the mother didn't know because they were you know in the back of the line, yeah. they were facing, you know, the front of the line and the person, the guy who was looking at the little girl was behind them. And my friend noticed that he was looking at her and checking her out. And it's just a young kid. I mean, it's disgusting. And you're going to yeah. sit there and, and smile. That well, That's, that's the world we live in now. So yes, I do understand how parents, they, they do protect. They're, yeah. very, they're very protective of their children. Please don't get this idea that I'm attacking child protection. No way. I would never attack child protection. We need child protection more now than ever. We do. And I do understand how parents may not understand who I am or what I'm about, which is why I have, I have tried to explain in every way possible that Yes, I am a child of cancer survivor. Yes, I am an advocate for raising, I, I raise awareness. I'm an advocate for funding and research. Yes, I write poetry. I use my, arti my artistic talents to put that message out, who I am, what I'm about. I'm not a, a, some kind of a, a, a freak predator who's, you know, writing love letters, which is what they're trying to make it sound like. Not the case at all. I would never write anything suggestive to children. That's not the kind of person I am. He's awake. Yeah, he's just lying there. He's acting like he's sleeping, and he can hear every word I say. Yep. Hey, Dad, what's five plus five? What's five plus five, Dad? Come on, it's not zero. Yeah, he's he's listening. He's listening to every word we're saying. <laughs> That's okay. So you get a dog up his book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only if they could see the way him and the dog sleep. Yeah, th these dogs. Well, you know, dogs are a man's best friend, and uh, you know, sometimes Barkley will come in and he'll join me. Like, I'll kick back in my room, get ready for bed. He'll come in and lay at my feet, keep my feet warm. He he, he hasn't me. lately. He hasn't lately because, like, when I'm trying to turn, because I turn a lot of my sleep to get comfortable, and I can't do it if he's laying on my blankets. I don't think he's been feeling too good. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's an old dog. He's getting old, and he's... Yeah, he's been here seven years. He's, I think he'll be, he... He'll be eight. In this cold weather, if he's got arthritis in his legs... This cold weather is not helping. Yeah, he'll be eight in May. Yeah, and in dog years, or in dog years, he would be like I think Dad said fifty-six. Yeah, 
seven years. So it's seven years for our one year. Yeah. So he'd be 56. If he's going to be eight in human years, so he'd be 56 in dog years. Yeah, yeah he's up there. He's up there. And, and you're getting to where you can really tell it. Yeah, he's, he's an old dog. He's... You know, it's just, it's why I don't, I don't want any more animals after Barkley and Scruffy and, and Patches and Baby Boy, because when you get attached, it's, it is the worst thing in the world. be the hardest on me, though, emotionally. Yeah. When your dog dies, it's, when your animals die, not just dogs, but cats. And see, Patches, she is... Like a service cat mm -hmm. to me. We've, you've had Patches for a long time. You've had Mama for a long time. Yeah, you figure when did Jay come home? Uh, he came home in 2007, but it, and that's been 12 then, years. That's when we found her. 12 years. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, she's she seems to be doing okay. She, I, yeah, she, it looks like she was going blind in one eye. Yeah, it, that, that's because that, I was going to talk to you about that. It looks like Mama Kitty is going blind in one eye, but I don't know. She seems to be getting around. And I've noticed she's gotten to where she's got patches of her dog. Probably from what, fighting with the cat. Yeah. Fighting with Baby Boy. Or I'm thinking it could be like him. Digging from the fleas. Yeah. Well, I've been here for an, almost an hour and 20 minutes. Whew. Yeah, I can imagine how long it's going to take to upload just that long. Oh, it'll take about three hours. YouTube, you really need to... Uh, Speed up the process. Yeah, because, you know, that takes up most my whole day. Yeah. Could you imagine these parents of the children that do the video... Yeah. You know, of their kids. Yeah. And then they have to sit there and wait. And wait and wait and wait. And they got maybe an appointment to go to. Yeah. So they're just sitting and waiting until after the kids are now going they're, to bed. Now they're, they're, there's spare time. Right. With their husbands, whatever. It, and I will say, too, that I, I'm subscribed to some channels where there are, like, there, there's a young girl. She's a Wilms warrior like I am. She does a vlog on her YouTube channel. I'm subscribed to her channel, by the way. And, um, you know, she uploads videos, places she's been to, and, and you know, she's she lost her hair. You know, the chemo made her lose her hair. But I'm subscribed to her channel, and she uploads bits and pieces of, of what she's doing. I'm, I'm subscribed to a lot of channels relating to, to child cancer. Um, but, you know, it... They're not like hour long like mine. You know, like I'm constantly recording, talking. Right. Well, like my girlfriend, April. Yeah. Who has yeah. cancer. Yeah. And. You can say it, cancer. She's got a rough life. Yeah. Because she's got other things <clears throat> going on with her besides the cancer. And she does the video. Where she's putting on makeup. Yeah. All that. Makes her feel good. Well, it's a product that she sells. Ah, uh, okay. Kind of like when they do the um, Lularoo Lula or whatever it's called. Lula, I, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. I know I'm sabotaging the name. <laughs> it's Lularoo or something like that or Posh, like a Posh makeup yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, I, yeah selling a product. But there are also people who like to apply makeup, um, just to, because they make you know it makes them feel good. It makes them feel beautiful. But then there are people that you with the way they put on their makeup. They cake it on. They put like a pound of mascara on. And and nowadays, you're seeing your goth look. Yeah, and it's like I haven't seen that this much makeup since I don't know Friday at the Shrine Circus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, would have been cool if Dad would have went down, you know, and got a clown face on him with his red nose. And... Yeah, that would have been. I, I, I have to say, though, the, the face painting when the kids were, they had the Spider-Man face paint, that was really cute. 
And they had um they actually had Spider Man there. Yeah, they did. Where he was flying around the ring on a cable. Yeah. And yeah, the kids like that kind of stuff. I noticed they had theme was um hero. Uh, you know, like the action hero. Yeah, the the action action figures, yeah. Spider Man The Superhero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This year. They were superhero themed. Yeah. Kids like that kind of stuff. We're normally... I thought it was cool. Normally, I don't really see somewhat of a theme, you know? Yeah. It's just all acts. But it's it's a circus, too, you know? Well, this and, way here, it had a theme toward, towards the children. Yeah, well, it's all because it's, it's for kids. Right. The Shrine Circus is for Shriners Hospitals for Children, so... And there's people, the parents take their kids, so of course it's going to be rated G or, or whatever. It's going to be kid themed. Right. Although Snowball, the, the big polar bear, he ended he leaned forward, rip. Yeah. And they had the sound effect where yeah. it, it sounded yeah. like he farted in the person's face, but they keep it, you know, rated G, rated PG. Yeah. You know, it, it's for kids. You know, I mean, they, they make it funny. And that's what makes the show the show. It, it brings in the money, and it you know the, the the all the money goes to the Shriners Hospitals, which is why I go every year. I'm a sucker for charity. And you know what I would like to go see? Remember back like back when like Little House on the Prairie, and they had. The, I wasn't born yet. Oh, well. Nor would I, but I've seen it. Yeah, you TV. were. Little House was in the <laughs> 70s and the 80s. Come on, you were around then. I wasn't born yet. But anyway, oh, they had the circuses with the pop up tent. Yeah, they still have those. I would like to find out when they have one around I here. I thought the Shiawassee County Fair had a circus uh, and a tent. Was that? I thought they did. I know they have. They have one out in, I think, on the Hibbard Road. It's a circus, but that's... It's not, yeah, at the at the fairgrounds? I think so. Because the fairgrounds is on Hibbard Road. Yeah, I, I think so. See, like, the, the Shrine Circus, I mean, the Dow Event Center, that, that's an arena circus. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, the old, uh, older one, they've got one around here. Yeah. It's, it's even came to Chess Night before. But yeah. Yeah, I would, they, I'd like, I'm going to watch for it. And uh, sorry about the interruption. That's the alarm. Yeah, it's, it's bedtime. 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock a.m. Dad should be getting up. Any, well, he, he's awake. He's just laying there being quiet. <laughs> yeah. You know he's awake over there. He just. Yeah. Me and Lady, I hear Pink Panther, Jared. I hear it in the background too. They they played the Pink Panther theme at the Shrine Circus when they let the tigers out. Yeah. But anyway, we've been here for about an hour and twenty minutes. How long is it going to take to upload? Oh, that? over an hour and twenty, an hour and twenty, <laughs> almost an hour and twenty-four minutes. Probably the usual time. So I'm going to wrap up the Sunday video update. Yeah, sorry, Dad's being. Yeah, Dad, he's just lying. He's just lying there. He's he hears every bit of what we're talking about. Um, I mean, yeah, I know he ain't what when yet. But... <laughs> hey, Dad, there's a big fat giant spider crawling up your leg. He's just. Dad's, oh well. Dad's terrified of spiders. But I, I shouldn't say that either because I don't want to jumpstart his heart. <laughs> you know, he's going to be 61 in April. But then again... Oh, I put his age out there and he didn't even flinch about that either. He, he's not saying a word. No. Usually he has something to say about that. But anyway, yeah, we have a blanket up to the door. I, I, to keep I, think, the, that, I think the dog and him are both... To keep the cold air out because it's really freaking cold outside. Yeah, they're they're out. Anyway, only if they could see it on camera, they think it was so cute the way these two entwine. Yeah, yeah, they're my dog, man's best friend. 
But anyway, they're out, and same goes for me. I'm out. Amy's out. Peace out. Be safe. And stay warm. Stay warm. Yeah, it's not just Michigan <laughs> experience in the deep freeze. It's other states as well. Yeah. West Virginia and Ohio and Indiana, a, a good chunk of, of the United States. But anyway, that's it for me in this week's Sunday video update. I'm Jared Fuller. I hope you'll join me again next week. And if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for subscribing. And um, I'm sure we'll be chatting very soon. Until next week, same bear time, same bear channel. Peace out. Much love. Take care.